Hi, in today's episode we will take a look at the ADSR. ADSR stands for Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release. It's a four-phase envelope for the volume of your keystrokes. When you play a natural instrument the notes don't come on and off immediately. It just needs some time to gain amplitude and also you have some resonance when you release. We want to simulate this to get a natural sound. This is how it sounds without the envelope. And now I will get an attack phase, a decay phase, a lower sustain and a release phase. So this sounds obviously more natural. To be able to change the values of this envelope, I decided to use these four knobs here. This keyboard shows me which control it is that I am changing. And this is the value, we have also 127 max there. To display the actual ADSR that we are shaping with our controls, I added a small gimmick to this circuit. I've added two additional ADCs to port A and K and connected two probes here with uh, X and Y display on the oscilloscope to be able to draw lines on them. You don't actually need this, but I like to have it. The Arduino sketch I provide to you also contains the complete code for drawing the lines. So if you're interested, just take a look at this. This is what the envelope looks like. We have the four phases. The first phase, when you stroke the key, starts here with a zero amplitude and ramps up to the maximum amplitude. Then we have the decay phase, where you are ramping down to your sustain level. And the sustain level is kept as long you left the key pressed. And then we have the release phase. The release phase just lowers the amplitude until zero. It's a bit psychedelic how the amplification circuit influences the display. This is how it would like without the envelope. So we have the sustain phase at the maximum, then we have no decay phase and we have no attack phase and no release phase. As you can see all the parameters except for sustain just changes the time that a phase takes. Sustain just changes the level. So this is without the envelope. Then we can add some attack phase where we ramp up to the volume. but it stops immediately. The release phase just gives some echo. Then we have the decay phase. So it doesn't change anything unless the sustain is lowered. The idea is that we have a bit more velocity to let the instrument play and then we have the sustain phase. So get sustain a bit lower and then a short decay phase. I don't know if uh, you could hear it, how the volume changed. Let's make sustain really low so you can distinguish it. This is sustain. Now I release the key. So whenever using a significant decay ramp, I think it's the best to have a short attack. So And this is simply how ADSR works. We can just take a look at the waveform output. So this is how the waveform looks like. You could see how the amplitude changed. Beside the ADSR and the display, I've also added support for the EE prompt to write the parameters down. So whenever I restart the device, I don't have to change the parameters again. But I have also bad news about this project. I'm running into performance issues using the GCC compiler. Even though I'm using fixed point arithmetics, the GCC compiler doesn't really know what parts I'm using of the values afterwards. 
So unless I don't switch to assembler, we can't go any further than this. You can hear the effect when the timer interrupt just takes too long to mix up the values. So we play one key, then we add another. This works well. And the third one. Okay, so the frequency changes. That means that we don't get um, yeah, our samples mixed in time. To point out how bad it is really, um, this is already 22 kilohertz. So I changed the frequency uh, to 22 kilohertz and uh, it's just capable of mixing up uh, two keys at once. That's bad. Reducing the sampling frequency to 11 kilohertz is really painful. The sound quality is really reduced. This is how it sounds like. Okay, it can mix up to 7 keys without um, any issues. This should be sufficient for the most cases, but it really sounds bad. I won't show the code this time since it became a bit complicated because of all the optimizations I already have implemented. Uh, but I will add comments to the code and you can download it and if you are interested you can go into details and ask me if you have questions there. So uh, feel free just to check out or uh, just download it and use it for your purposes. This is all for this episode. I hope this was informative. And um, I will just do one other episode uh, on shaping the waveform, so the type of oscillation we had just um, sort of until now. Um, I will just shape the waveform using the sliders on the keyboard here. This is a really short one and uh, I hope to release it the day after this episode. And then we will go back to electronics. It's much more fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe are curious what's coming next. So maybe you subscribe and just tune in again. Bye.